Hi, welcome to the Reclaim Me channel and today uh, the video is devoted to frequently asked questions uh, from our technical support. One, if not the first of frequent issues, is trying uh, to troubleshoot a hardware problem with software alone. Uh, this, in most cases, does not work. Most often, people repeatedly attempt recovery, which ends in uh, disk disconnecting, uh, locking up or otherwise becoming fully unreadable. Uh, so, the first issue is when a disk drops offline. The second issue is when people wait excessive times, uh, for example, weeks or months for the scan to complete. Slow recoveries. And the last issue is when people uh, try the recovery software on a RAID, uh, which has more failed disks than its fault tolerance allows. Multiple. Failures in a read. In any of these cases, a disk or disks must be imaged or cloned first. Image or clone disks. Severely damaged disks require mechanical repair and a hardware imager. Disks with few to moderate number of bad blocks often may be imaged by a software imager. Software imager in our Reclaim Pro is fairly good, but uh, the result depends on the choice of chipset. Uh, never use USB or Firewire adapters to image a disk containing bad sectors uh, because this will not work due to adapter limitations. So you should stick to SETA connections. Even with those, uh, different SETA chipsets uh, produce different results. Uh, from our experience, plain vanilla Intel ICH without RAID uh, works best. All other chipsets we uh, have tried had one or other drawback. For example, Marvel. Retries a bad sector indefinitely and refuses to cancel the read. NVIDIA at one time had driver so bad that uh, blue screen of death came standard after a bad sector. Uh, complicated read controllers like LCI or adaptic uh, have their complicated uh, error recovery schemes uh, optimized for rate use. Uh, these error recovery attempts by a controller also mess up with imaging. Uh, so avoid this chipsets. Another hardware problem is a hardware issue associated not with a disk but uh, with a PC doing the recovery. For example, hard lock apps, uh, reboots or blue screens. Uh, modern Windows uh, is good enough not to allow user software uh, to crash the entire system. So, if you see system white crash, 
uh, most likely you deal with hardware or driver problem. Uh, consider dropping manufacturer provided uh, drivers and using standard uh, Microsoft drivers uh, whenever possible and also do the RAM test on a PC. In the second section I want to cover the repeated question of whether it is possible to recover data from a RAID when too many disks have failed. The short answer is no, but let's look more closely in it. First, let's recall the fault tolerance limits for each array type. Read 0. Since it is non-fault tolerant array, it cannot survive even one member disk failure. Data recovery is possible when all disks are present. Read 1. It is fault tolerant array, data recovery is possible with at least one of the two disks. Rate 5. Is a fault tolerant array, uh, you can recover data if no more than one disk has failed. Rate 6. Is a, fault to, is a fault tolerant array, data recovery is possible even if two array member disks have failed. And rate 10. Is a fault tolerant array 2 in general, uh, data recovery is possible if no more than one disk has failed. However, there are cases uh, when you can recover data having only half of disks. In these cases, it is important which disks are missing. So, one disk or more. After recalling this, let's discuss why partial recoveries are not possible when more disks have failed than it is allowed by the fault tolerance uh, by the array fault tolerance. This question often follows the previous one. The customer asks something like, uh, as we lost only one third of data, can we uh, have back uh, two thirds of our files? Our answer is again no. Unless missing disks are repaired, nothing valuable can be recovered. Now let's look at RAID 0 diagram. So we have a RAID 0 consisting of three disks. Disk 1, disk 2 and disk 3. Data blocks. And let's imagine that disk 3 has failed. Given that there were n disks in the array, in our case 3 disks, and the block size was S, uh, the largest contiguous area which does not have the data lost in it is n minus 1 multiplied by S. Uh, in this case, twice the block size. Typical block sizes are 64 kilobytes for a rate 0 and up to 256 kilobytes for a rate 5. Typical number of disks is 4 or maybe 6 disks. The maximum recoverable uh, chunk Thus, is about 1 megabyte. For comparison, modern digital photo is 5 to maybe 10 megabytes. Documents are also larger than 1 megabyte. Therefore, each file will have some part of lost data. The situation where each file has some partial damage leads to a question of whether it is possible to take damaged recovered files and fix them using special file repair tools designed to repair specific specific file types. There is a wide variety of such tools ranging from the original PKZip fix to various 
Outlook email database repair tools like scan PST. In this case, our answer is also no, it is not going to work. Let's illustrate. For example, we have a file with several bytes damaged. In this case, a file repair tools can fix this file. So the file is repairable. However, if you deal with incorrectly recovered file system, file system failure, recovered files miss either all or half of the bytes. And in this case, file repair tools do not help you. The same relates to files recovered from a RAID missing too many disks. RAID failure. The holes uh, which are produced in, in, play, in place of missing stripes are too big and too frequent to be fixed. Last but not least, there is one more note related to RAID recovery. When you disassemble a RAID, always label disks and write down the disk order. Modern RAID, both hardware and software, stores its configuration on disks. The main goal of this is to be able to move a disk pack between controllers. As a side effect, you can insert disks in any order and the controller will recognize them correctly. Uh, so that's why it may seem unnecessary to bother recording the disk order. However, there are problems not related to disks but to controller cables and ports, power supply or to local overheating. In any of these cases, uh, it is useful to know which disk corresponds to which physical position in the array, so that not to mess up things even more. Uh, these were the questions I wanted to discuss today and I hope you find them useful. If you have some other questions in mind, uh, please feel free to ask us uh, via our contact page. Reclaim Me Team was with you. See you soon!